noon. We will begin the Calcasieu Parish Public Briefing for Hurricane Laura. Today is Sunday, August the 30th, 2020 at 4 p.m. I'm Brian Beam, Calcasieu Parish Police Jury Administrator. We're going to get right into it and hit on some things a lot of citizens in, uh, in the area are very interested in. Uh, and I'll just get right to it. Let's, let's start off with what we're going to call citizen services and supplies. Um, we've got some updates there, and our emergency preparedness director for the parish, Dick Grimion, will come up. Thanks, Brian. Um, first off, uh, there's a lot of, we get a lot of calls about FEMA assistance, and we're going to have someone here speak for FEMA later. Uh, but one thing I want to stress with FEMA, if you don't register, you can't get in the system. That is, that is the absolute first step. So Jerry is going to uh, share some information with us, including the 800 number that you call. But I just want to start out by saying that if you don't register, you won't get in line. Um, we ha currently have two what we call pods operational, one at the Civic Center in Lake Charles and one at McMurray Park in Sulphur. Uh, the, the pod in Lake Charles is, has uh, water, food, ice, and tarps. The pod in Sulphur currently has water and food only, but the other two items will be added uh, as they're available. We also have a solution for um, all of the uh, cities in uh, Calcasieu Parish. We'll be announcing those locations probably at tomorrow's briefing. A uh, couple of safety messages as usual. The sheriff, I'm sure, is going to reiterate this, but traffic safety, one of the mayors has already mentioned this. There's a lot of traffic out on the roadway, really more than what we need. We're encouraging people uh, to stay off the road. We know that you have to come check on your property. We're urging you to look and leave, which is come in, make sure your property is secure, and then go back to a safe place because Lake Charles or uh, Calcasieu Parish, all of southwest Louisiana, is not a safe place to be right now. There's still many power lines hanging down, other obstructions in the roadways, and we don't, don't want anyone being hurt. Last, and the, and the sheriff's going to cover this again also, generator safety. Uh, we've had several carbon monoxide uh, deaths here from generators being improperly used. Uh, just a reminder, never run a generator in an enclosed space. Even a carport or garage with open sides, you're still susceptible to uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. And with that, I'll hand it over to or, or Brian. Thank you, Dick. Uh, before we get the sheriff up here, I just wanted to mention we've been doing these briefings several days now, and in addition to the parish's Facebook page airing this live, we appreciate KPLC TV airing these. It's very helpful, reaches a lot of people, and we thank them for that. Also, beginning with this briefing, and I think going forward, Gator 99 Radio is airing these live, which helps a tremendous amount of people, a lot more exposure. Uh, you can listen in your vehicle and so forth. So I just wanted to pass that along. Now we'll hear on law enforcement issues, Sheriff Tony Mancuso. Thank you, Brian. And, and I also want to say the same to our media because I know they're limping too. They've, they've got a lot of destruction and y'all have done a great job. And I know it's very difficult under y'all circumstances too to get that message out. So. Uh, we really appreciate it because you're our lifeline right now to our community, and, and we have a lot going on. Uh, I feel like I'm always the bearer of bad news. Uh, to the media, we're going to get to you. We were looking for a person of interest, and I'm, I'm bringing this up because I want the town of Iowa. Uh, I know the mayor and the chief were very concerned last night and asked us to step up our efforts, and we did. But uh, the citizens were very concerned. I think I mentioned last night that we did not feel this was a an, an act of uh, a, a random act of violence, um, and we still do not to this day. We don't we don't believe this was just somebody from the outside coming in and looting and killing anybody. And I know you see with social media, you see so many rumors. So I ask you, 
if the local media doesn't say it or your public officials don't say it, don't assume that it's always true and, and factual. Um, we're not going to mislead you. We're not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, that's why I said I feel like I'm always the bearer of bad news because uh, right now it's just it's tough times for all of us and, and we have a lot to go through and get to. We do have a person uh, arrested, not for the murders in uh, in Iowa, but a person of interest that we were we were going to put out that we were looking for him as a person of interest. He has been picked up, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in Eunice. So we'll deal with that. And uh, we do want to question this person. Um, his name is uh, Scott Martin Kidd, 36 of Kinder. We do have warrants for him for other related, unrelated crimes. So uh, the town of Iowa, uh, you know, let me assure you we're working this. We're working it hard. Uh, and like I said, we have a person of interest. Doesn't mean that, that – uh, he is the person that did this, but we believe he could either help us and and uh, and and find out more information. Um, so uh, we are working a uh, a what we believe right now a homicide suicide. Uh, I don't really have any particulars because I just got the text, so I will deal with that when I leave here, and we'll we'll uh, we'll sort that out. So I know people. Uh, I, I keep saying this. Relax, you know. Uh, we're going to get through this. I promise you things will get better. I know we try. We don't want to relate this, uh, 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 compare this to Rita, but we do. Uh, it's just because many of us have been through this. And I can tell you m my thoughts and my beliefs right now are that we are so much ahead of the game uh, from Rita. Rita was tough, and this is tougher, but I can tell you from – all of our efforts, whether it's your public officials, the National Guard, FEMA, you know, we're, we're, we're two weeks ahead of where we were in Rita, maybe even three in, in some instances. So um, it may not seem like it, but uh, we were hit hard, folks, and, and, uh, and this is going to take a long recovery effort, I can assure you. And it's, it's going to um, – but it's going to work out. We're going to get through this, and we're going to get through it as a community. I want to go over some – your chiefs and I meet every day. We either have a Zoom meeting. Uh, mostly we have a Zoom meeting. We, we, some of them will come to my office. Some of our city uh, are still having some Internet issues and stuff. So, uh, but we are, I promise you, we're talking every day and, and solving problems. I can tell you with 100% assurity that crime is down in the sense of what we normally deal with in a day, on a daily basis. You know, you hear on the, 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 inter, uh, the, the, the rumors on, on Internet that, oh, there's looting. And let me tell you something. We have less crime going on right now than we do on a normal day in Calcasieu Parish, a lot. I know it doesn't seem like that when I bear the bad news, but trust me, we deal with it and we see it every day. You are flooded with law enforcement right now. You're flooded with National Guards people who are augmenting our law enforcement, MPs from the military. They're helping. I'm telling you, we, you have more, more law enforcement in this community on a normal day-to-day -day basis than you ever have. And, and they're working hard. And many of them are working hard right now when their houses are destroyed um, and, and they have nothing, you know, nothing to go home to when they get finished. And we're working, I promise you, all of your public officials are working on that too to deal with that issue and that aspect for them. Um, but they're working under some pretty tough conditions right now. Uh, so. Please bear with them and, and, uh, and have them in your thoughts and prayers. I'm going to go through some to, to show you what we have. Uh, the sheriff's office has arrested four people for looting, one for domestic violence. Lake Charles Police Department has arrested two for looting, one for domestic violence. Westlake Police for two felony narcotics, Benton PD for trespassing. And you might say, well, why would we take somebody for trespassing? Because we asked him to leave once. We asked him to leave twice. The third time, he's going to jail. He's not getting the, the message, okay? I told you, we're, we feel for people, and we understand, but you're not going to go on people's property and think you can, you know, whether you commit a crime or not. You need to go to your homes, secure your homes, try to fix your homes if that's what you to do, and leave and go somewhere to stay because it's not safe here. Uh, this is this is uh, different circumstances. If you're walking around trying to look, uh, you're going to get questioned. And if you if you get somewhere again that you're not supposed to be, then the chances are you could go to jail. And I can promise you, the jail is not a pleasant place to be right now. Okay, it's uh, it's got some damage too. Sulfur, um, 
did uh, arrested three for looting. So these men and women are out there doing their job. But I can tell you, on, and, and usually it's the same criminals we arrest every day anyway, okay? Um, we have that many burglaries and robberies in our, in our city and parish on a day-to-day -day basis. You, the criminal activity is not going rampant and, and things are okay in Calcasieu Parish, all right? We have our normal day-to-day -day problems that we would have on any day, actually less. Uh, we just have other problems that we're having to deal with and, and face that, uh, but, we're, but we're making it and we're doing good and, and these men and women are doing a good job. It's still not safe. Uh, we're still having people and listen, Stitch, I'm gonna tell on you, Stitch almost blew through a, a four way a while ago. Sometimes we're distracted, we're on the phone. This is not the time to be distracted when you're driving. Pay attention. I did it, I told you on TV the other day, I did it. Treat every intersection, even if you have the right of way, even if there's, there's a, a stop sign that you know is treated, because some of those are down. Treat every intersection as a four way stop, every red light, and slow down. Just because it says you can go 40 miles an hour because the, the sign happened to survive, does not mean you need to be going that fast right now. Slow down and relax. Uh, curfew, you know, we're stopping people. Um, please try to uh, adhere to the curfew and, and come in, do a day's work if you need to, if you're leaving, because I think that's what a lot of people are doing. Um, come in and, and get out. Uh, Mayor, I know you asked me to address something, uh, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Uh, anybody else, um, Brian? Is there anything I didn't cover, or Dick? That uh, generator safety. Generator safety. Um, you know, I actually we went we went to a couple houses and told them, look, take them out of the garage. People aren't listening. Uh, a garage is not a safe place. Under an awning is not real safe. It's better than a garage, but put it away from the house with the exhaust facing away from the house. Uh, I'm not an expert on this, but I know what I've seen with my own eyes. All right. Uh, I want to ask uh, Connor, uh, Colonel Conroy, Conroy, is that right? Yes. Did I get it right? Uh, the, the National Guard, I'm going to tell you, has been unbelievable, as they always are for us. For us. Um, they're doing things law enforcement-wise. They're doing a lot, but I want him to give updates. Uh, I know Colonel DeSarmo did it yesterday, but would you come up and give us an update on yes. some progress? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sheriff Mancuso, members of the police jury. Uh, local mayors, it's been a real pleasure and a privilege to spend time with you today, um, and I'm, I really am truly privileged to be to be here with you, uh, Mr. Beam, Mr. Gramion. Thanks so much for for welcoming us uh, here to the to the EOC. So, as Mr. Gramion said, we opened another pod today over in Sulphur, and uh, that's that's up and running, um, uh, a little bit lightly. Uh, commoditized right now. We are working hard to get more ice to both the Sulphur site and to the Lake, uh, Lake Charles Civic Center site. Um, in the tri-state area, we've uh, cleared about another 100 miles of main roads. And um, uh, I'm happy to report that we're gonna move the command element of the, uh, of the brigade forward to the, uh, to the Lake Charles uh, Civic Center site there. Um, we have over 500 soldiers in Calcasieu Parish right now supporting, and that does not include about 300 uh, additional for security operations here in Calcasieu Parish. So it's a it's a it's a safe place to be, and uh, it's a place that's getting as much support as you continue to request. Um, again, it's a privilege. Your parish and municipality governments have worked very hard, and we stand by ready to. Uh, support any of those requests that come through the EOC. It's just uh, come on through the EOC. We head them up to uh, to our operating center, to Baton Rouge, and then we can uh, bring it down to you. Any questions for me? All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Bean. We appreciate the National Guard and all you've been doing, and uh, we'll hear from them as we go each day. Let's hear next on road debris clearance and the update on that. We'll hear from Alan Wainwright, Calcasieu Parish Public Works Director. Thank you, Brian. Uh, quick update today. Uh, a very good, satisfying day again. Uh, so uh, at, in the parish, we have roughly 1,200 miles, give or take, and uh, we're nearing completion on the push phase, as, as we described. Uh, the things that are out there now have been either missed or they can't be 
uh, undone because of entangled wire. So on things on, we're going back through tomorrow with a, a re run them all the routes, look for missed spots, but uh, the push, if you, if you would, is, is wrapping up. So we're turning our attention to debris collection. Uh, today uh, was primarily spent uh, locating sites to begin uh, setting up for debris collection and reduction and, and all the things that go with that and ultimate, ultimate disposal. We would expect that in the next day or so, those are gonna be coming up and we'll be phasing into a more full formal uh, debris removal. On the debris removal, um, so we're getting a few things where people are beginning to work, like uh, Sheriff said, they're here, they're working the day and they go back. As you're putting debris to the road, please understand, uh, especially the heavy vegetative debris, you have time. We will not do this in one pass. Uh, it'll be multiple passes. So don't necessarily think you need to um, stack it so high or so far that you have to be into the road lane and, and impede traffic. So uh, also when you are working at your site and its uh, conditions are tight, uh, please you know, uh, don't park on the road or, or to, to work your site. So traffic is, is a real problem out there. We're having uh, that little problem moving around is the reports I'm getting. So uh, you know, especially as we get you know, two, 300 debris <laughs> you know, collection crews moving around here and, and really trying to make hauls and get things out of here as fast as it can, then obviously traffic, that traffic uh, needs to have access to things. Um, uh, someone mentioned the road signs uh, and, and you know, the speed and running stop signs, things like that. We, we have started our sign restoration effort today. We were uh, working on the uh, uh, setting up the program. We will be uh, standing up the available signs, but some, like someone mentioned, we you know, have a near 100% loss on your signs and stops uh, traffic signals too. So, so uh, the work is beginning to start there. We'll first do a kind of a crude restoration, then we'll replace all the signs in the parish. That's gonna be a, a significant effort. We'll get some numbers here, uh, maybe in a future briefing on what that type of effort is. I would also like to thank the National Guard. Uh, those guys have done a great job for us. Some of the things that they've been working, uh, they've, they've been pushing on the state routes. So their focus has been there for us and they have uh, reported back a, a same sort of standard that it, the push is, is clear except for those items where we just got major power uh, situations where we gotta get to. Uh, National Guard, being finished with that sort of task, be moving on to some site clearance, which would be for your public sites. So parks, the public buildings, this campus where we're at today, we're coordinating with the school school board to try and assist them in uh, uh, debris removal on their sites. And just, you know, we know they need to rebuild the, the structures and get that part done. And we're trying to help them uh, clean up. So um, we're beginning that, that phase of it. Um, and you know, hopefully we get that cleaned up, be a little easier for them to do their thing. So with that, that's my report on uh, sort of debris and roads. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to take any. Thank you. Very good. We'll go to utilities next. I'm gonna read one of the statements from one of the electric providers. Entergy does not have an update. They, they of course continue with assessments, and uh, and this goes for both companies, Beauregard Electric and Entergy. It's it's really important to understand that even if uh, you see you may see folks in your neighborhood fixing your lines, that's the end of the system. So you have substations, and then prior to that, transmission lines, several of which have to be rebuilt, which that is different from repair. So again, weeks instead of days. But I do want to read a statement that was sent to us from Beauregard Electric uh, on the status of their, uh, their uh, restoration. Bessie continues to, um, continues to rebuild its infrastructure after its service area took the direct, direct hit from Hurricane Laura. They're following standard practice in repairing and energizing its lines. All substations are served by large transmission lines that are powered by other utility companies. That's, that's very important to understand who are working to repair their damage. So some of that's even out of their control. Crews continue to cut trees, reset poles, make repairs on more than 5,700 miles of line. And they still anticipate members will be without power for several weeks. So 
This will get a little more in focus as we get closer, but it's just so early for them. So we appreciate everybody's patience with the electrical power restoration. Water utilities, I'll cover that as well. A little bit better news on the water service. Uh, right now, more areas are having water service restored by their providers. And if you look across the board in Calcasieu, you'll see everything from not working yet to partially to some are fully operational. And without going into those individually, it's too, too long and confusing. Please just contact your provider directly to find out any status of your system, whether it's municipal or special service district. One other thing, regardless of where you live in the parish, if you suspect or see a water leak, please notify your water provider, that district or that city. They're trying to repair all those so they can build the pressure to get the system up earlier. So that's a quick overview of utilities as far as water and electricity. Um, any questions on that? Okay. We will now go to some of the I guess what I'll call individual assistance uh, speakers. We have from FEMA, who we introduced yesterday, Jerry Stoller. We appreciate you coming back, and he has an update for us. Jerry? Thank you, Mr. Beam. Parish mayors and uh, members of the police jury, thank you. Um, you know, Dick mentioned the... Um, 800 number, 1-800-621-3362. It's very important that you uh, register with FEMA to begin the process. You can also register online at www.disasterassistance.gov. Uh, I can tell you this afternoon that for uh, the statewide, over uh, 50,000 households, have uh, registered for federal assistance already. And in the coming days, Mr. Beam, I hope to provide you with some information on how you know, we're, we're doing here in, in, in Calcasieu Parish. But uh, 50,000 plus uh, after uh, three days is a pretty good number. And the other thing, I, what I found interesting is um, over 95% of those registrations were through the 1-800 number or online. So that process is working. We've had uh, very few uh, that we've had to register so far uh, on, on, the, uh, on the ground here. But uh, again, we'll be able to t talk a little bit more in detail about how we're doing in Calcasieu Parish in the coming days. Um, I just want to, uh, there are two topics I want to uh, talk about today. And the first is, you know, I spoke yesterday about the individual assistance program. And I just want to uh, just briefly describe how um, the sequence of assistance, how we look at it, right? How we, how we look at each household. The, the first thing we look at is whether or not the household has taken advantage of any uh, voluntary agencies or uh, any other, uh, you know, any other immediate needs that they, that they might have and what they've taken advantage of in the community. Then the next thing is, Remember yesterday I spoke about insurance. And uh, I'm encouraging everyone, again, after you register with FEMA, you have homeowner's insurance, contact your adjuster and begin that process because that's going to factor into, uh, you know, the amount that you would be eligible for. So once we uh, look through all that, then we begin to look through the uh, basic uh, assistance programs that you could be eligible for. I spoke yesterday about temporary housing assistance, and that could be for anywhere from lodging up to perhaps uh, a FEMA trailer. And uh, that program, uh, you know, if, if, if a household qualifies, could last for uh, up to 18 months. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that every household that is eligible for that would be in that unit for 18 months, but it could it could potentially um, uh, extend for that long a period of time. Now, in terms of uh, financial assistance to repair the home, a lot of things are going to factor into that: the extent of damage to uh, the dwelling, right? And again, the insurance factors into all this. Um, and I can tell you uh, from my experience. 
Let's use the floods in 2016 here in Louisiana as an example. Uh, the average, the average FEMA assistance for those homes ranged between $4,500 and $7,000. That was the average federal assistance. So the point I'm trying to make is that FEMA assistance is not going to return a household to the way it was before Hurricane Laura, right? It's not intended for that. It's just to provide perhaps a, a, a way to get make that home safe and habitable, but it's not meant to be a replacement for uh, uh, homeowners insurance, okay? So FEMA housing assistance will not make you whole. Um, there are uh, another uh, agency that's going to be working closely with us will be the Small Business Administration. The Small Business Administration will offer not only businesses, but homeowners uh, low interest loans that can help to uh, the, the homeowner uh, get what they need in order to uh, make more permanent repairs, okay, for whatever can't be covered by the homeowner's insurance or the, uh, the FEMA assistance. So representatives from the Small Business Administration will be working with us here in Calcasieu Parish, and um, they can talk to homeowners about uh, the application process and whether or not this is a, uh, something that the homeowner wants to do. There is also another form of assistance that's available for uh, medical expenses, perhaps some transportation needs that a household might have. We call this other needs assistance, and this will, be, this will all be factored in when a household registers with FEMA, and uh, the uh, applicant services specialist will discuss this with each, with each homeowner to see if, in fact, they qualify for that. So, um, again, FEMA assistance will not make a household whole, it's really designed to just enable or give that homeowner what they need to make that home safe and habitable, but it's not meant to replace uh, insurance. And again, that number is 1-800-621-3362 or online at www.disasterassistance.gov. The second topic I wanted to talk about um, you know, when you get an event like this, it tends to bring out uh, not only the, the best in people, but also the worst, right? There's always somebody out there that's perhaps trying to take advantage of those that are, you know, having a, a really tough time. And disasters like this are no, are no exception to that. So I, I bring that up because, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of people walking around the neighborhoods, checking out the damage. And FEMA is going to be out there as well. I mentioned there could be housing inspectors that will actually come uh, to inspect the damaged property. I will have other uh, FEMA staff uh, walking uh, through the neighborhoods just to check on whether or not the household is registered. And what I want to assure you is that FEMA does not charge for any of these services. Okay? So if you're approached by someone and they ask for a fee you know, they're from FEMA and they ask for a fee and you should not have anything to do with it. And I feel um, certain that uh, Sheriff Mancuso would like to know about that kind of activity. All right. But FEMA does not charge for inspections. We do not ask for any bank account information or anything like that of a financial nature. OK. And one way that you can know whether or not the individual you're talking to is credible is it any FEMA staff that's wa working in the community should have a FEMA shirt on, and most importantly, they should have a badge that identifies themselves as a member of FEMA, okay? And it's very distinct, and we'll provide some more of this information. I'll provide this to, um, uh, to Dick and, and to you, um, uh, Mr. Beam, so we can, we can get that out to the public. But unfortunately, uh, fraud, is uh, something uh, that we have to deal with during these kinds of events, and we want to make sure that you have all the information you need uh, as these individuals work in the community so that you can quickly identify whether or not 
uh, this is uh, this is not credible uh, credible behavior. Uh, but again, um, continuing to work very close with the parish emergency manager. Uh, we're building up our presence here. Uh, I look forward to getting more uh, FEMA personnel into uh, the neighborhoods and into the cities. Uh, we will have uh, disaster recovery centers in Calcasieu Parish. Uh, now, as I said yesterday, they're going to look different than they have on other disasters because of the COVID environment. And I'm just waiting for more details from Baton Rouge on uh, how we're going to do this. And then I'll be very working very closely with um, uh, Dick uh, Gramillion on um, discussing where we can we can put these in order to have uh, make those available to everyone so that you can get further information uh, on your application with FEMA. And that's uh, subject to any questions that may come up later. Uh, that's all I have for today, sir. Appreciate that, Jerry. Well, next here from Red Cross, Joshua Joachim, uh, who is the CEO of Red Cross Louisiana. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Brian. Uh, the American Red Cross is proud to serve uh, the members of Calcasieu Parish and, and surrounding communities and, of course, communities across the state that have been impacted by uh, Hurricane Laura. Um, our Red Cross volunteers have set up uh, fixed emergency supply distribution and feeding sites at the following locations. Uh, here at the Lake Charles Civic Center at 900 North Lakeshore Drive, at McMurray Park, 300 South Hazel Street in Sulphur, and Park Terrace Shopping Center uh, at 1011 North Pine Street, and that's in DeRitter, Louisiana, and also in South Beauregard Elementary at 12380 Highway, that's 12380 Highway 171 in Longville, Louisiana. Uh, dinner will be served tonight, Sunday, August 31st at 6 p.m. at all four of these sites. Starting tomorrow, Monday, August 31st, we will add an additional distribution and feeding site at the Allen August Multipurpose Center and Annex at 2000 Moling Street in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, Red Cross will be serving meals at all sites mentioned above starting tomorrow, two times per day at lunchtime at noon, as well as 6 p.m. And that will be starting tomorrow, Monday, August 31st. And also starting tomorrow, the Red Cross will be distributing emergency supplies such as tarps, gloves, rakes, ma uh, masks, uh, trash bags, cleanup kits. And those will start at noon along with the feeding, but they will uh, end uh, the time to, to be determined. It will be depending on the, uh, how, how long our supplies last that day. And then we'll do it again the next day as, as we start to deplete our, uh, our trucks each day. Um, that distribution will occur again at all four of those locations I mentioned. Uh, we will also continue to do mobile distribution of supplies, including uh, water and snacks for people out in the community who are working in, in their houses or, uh, or even, even our responders who may need it. Um, all of these services are provided for free to, uh, to everyone. Um, so, and they're provided by volunteers. Uh, that's the majority of our workforce. So uh, as we go through this, it's gonna be a long response and recovery process. Uh, we're gonna need volunteers to continue to come in and help replenish our, uh, our, our workforce. So if you're interested uh, in, in volunteering for the American Red Cross, you can go to redcross.org and uh, you can register to volunteer. There, there are some uh, urgent needs for volunteers and we can certainly, certainly use uh, anyone who's willing to help give back in the community. Um, also, for any of our information updates that you're looking for, what the American Red Cross is uh, providing to the community, you can follow us on our social media websites on Facebook and or Twitter, and you can do that at our, ha at our handle, our Facebook and social media handles at ARC Louisiana. That's at ARC Louisiana. Pending any questions, I'll uh, stand down. Thank you. Appreciate uh, Joshua and the Red Cross's help in, in this event. We'll now hear from some of our elected officials, and we'll start with Calcasieu Parish Police Jury Vice President Brian Abshire. We appreciate Brian being here today. Thank you, Brian. Um, after arriving in Lake Charles yesterday, I was uh, truly saddened by some of the destruction that I saw. but. Um, pleased to see neighbors helping neighbors, families help, helping tear out sheetrock, you know, working in yards and cleaning things up. 
We are a resilient community. I know that we'll be strong after this. I know that we'll, we'll recover. It's just a long road. Um, as we start to repair homes and hire contractors, I just wanted to uh, provide a few tips from the Better Business Bureau about how to um, hire a contractor to make your repairs. Contact your insurance adjuster. Don't, do not make any permanent repairs until you have approval from your insurance company. Remember to document damage to the property via uh, pictures or videos. Beware of contractors that uh, claim to be an insurance specialist and ask you to sign agreements that might lock you into some sort of project. Check to make sure contractors you're considering hiring are properly licensed and have up-to-date insurance. If you hire uninsured and unlicensed contractors, you could be required to uh, pay for any damages that could occur on your property um, in the form of workers' compensation benefits. And always remember, do not hand over an insurance check until your work is completed, or at least has, been, has begun. Uh, these tips can be found on the Calcasieu Parish website, calcasieuparish.gov, or you can go to the Better Business Bureau website. So that's all I have. Thank you, Brian. These are very helpful tips. And of course, as people are, it's, it's happening so fast, but people are starting to get repairs. Those are very important tips, and we want people to uh, be safe. Uh, we are uh, very happy today to have Mayor Mike Danahay from the City of Sulphur. So we'd like to ask him to come up for some comments. They've made a lot of progress in Sulphur, and we'll, we'll hear from Mike. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brian. Uh, yeah, I'd like to just reiterate a little bit uh, what Brian had said earlier about being a resilient community. Uh, that's one of the most amazing things about Southwest Louisiana. We saw this prior uh, in the storm of Reed, of course, and of course now that's taking place, uh, how people are reacting uh, with each other and with others uh, in the community. And it's, it's a wonderful thing to watch. And, and I think that uh, Sheriff Mancuso said it best, we're, I think, light years ahead of we were, where we were before. Uh, as for the city of Sulphur, uh, we've been working very diligently with our team uh, of employees that uh, we've been able to bring back our services, our essential services such as water and wastewater, fire and police, we're now uh, operational. Um, we are now starting to work with our, our utility partners and try to uh, help them in their, their efforts to be able to restore their services to our area. Um, I ask that people be very patient, our citizens be patient in the community. Uh, there's going to be a lot of movement within your, your various neighborhoods and uh, roadways that uh, try to restore these utilities, and we hope that you would be very patient with them to, so that we can get them up as quickly as possible. Um, but that's kind of what's going on in Sulphur. We're very, very pleased what's taking place. Uh, like I say, the, the efforts that are taking place with our employees and our team of employees has been absolutely astronomically wonderful, and so we're very pleased for that. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mike. We'll hear, hear next from Mayor Nick Hunter, City of Lake Charles. Good afternoon. Uh, daily, uh, I have been riding through the neighborhoods and assessing uh, the different streets with our public works director and several other, other members of my administration. I was pleased today to see a lot of progress, and I hope people uh, can appreciate that. And Sheriff Mancuso said it earlier about the strides that have been made so far. And I truly am pleased so far with the clearing of streets. Entergy still has a lot of power lines down, so that is still an issue. But uh, our uh, contractor has been really working their tails off. And I was very pleased to see uh, the majority of streets in Lake Charles cleared at this moment. Uh, Brian, you kind of led off with good news about water system. Unfortunately, that does not extend to the city of Lake Charles. That good news does not ex extend to our water system right now. Um, we have made progress. However, my an analogy yesterday uh, still exists. Even when our water plants are working, if our water plants are working, there are thousands, and I mean that literally, thousands of breaks in our water lines throughout the city. If there is one thing I can stress to the public right now, what we need from you is help identifying where those breaks are. And uh, if uh, one, one big tip, one big tip off is gonna be if there's water spewing from the ground, 
that means there's a water break. And we have literally found locations where there's water spewing three feet from the ground. And I'm sorry that there's three phone numbers, but we were desperate to get this out to the public because fixing our water system is one of our top priorities right now. So there are three numbers you can call. If you see a water break, if you see a large pool of water that you believe is a water break, you can dial 491-1442, 491-1227, or 491-1453. If it's your house, great. If you're just driving around and you see it and you want to call it in, great. Again, those numbers are only for water breaks. That's one of our top priorities right now. I want to make sure people understand with social media and, and today's world, there are a lot of rumors that get started. The city is not kicking people out of their homes. We are not forcing people to leave the city of Lake Charles. There is a curfew in place, um, but we are strongly encouraging people not to be here. Uh, when I say we're not forcing people to leave, we're not going in and uh, taking people out of their homes and, and placing them outside the city of Lake Charles. But we are, again, strongly encouraging people to think about the scenario of trying to uh, trying to live in Lake Charles right now without water and sewer, uh, without electricity, and with the roads being uh, very dangerous. We've had a lot of conversation about um, housing, and I'm very happy that FEMA is here. Uh, I'm very happy that the Red Cross has some options to offer. Uh, I want to encourage people again to dial 211 if you're still not getting some of those needs met. Lake Charles is a really tough place to be right now. Uh, sheltering options inside the city of Lake Charles are really minimal, if anything, right now. Every major building in the city of Lake Charles has damage. We have sheltered citizens at various buildings during various uh, natural disasters the Civic Center, Purple Heart, uh, some gymnasiums, all of those places, all of those places are damaged and are not safe to have people in congregate shelters. So we are strongly encouraging people to use those options from FEMA, the Red Cross, or 211, and we are encouraging those agencies to have those options for people outside of Calcasieu Parish, because that's really the best option for people right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we have one more uh, report from elected officials. Mayor Paul Hess of the town of Iowa. Thank you, Brian. I'm uh, coming forward here. Normally, I don't come on here because most of the mayors and uh, OEP, they really give you the information that's very applicable to the town of Iowa. However, we've, we've got a lot of citizens asking what's going on specifically. Unfortunately, with us coming through, all our communications have been down. We don't have internet. We don't have radio for our police radios. They're all on low wattage. Uh, we don't have phone lines. So we're trying to operate as best we can on cell phones, which as you know, cell phones are very spotty. So we've done a pretty good job. Now we hope to have, um, of course our, our police radios up are up now. We finally got them up just today. We also anticipate our direct phone line to be in place. We're routing the landline to a cell phone. That should be in place by tomorrow. So you will be able to get through, but you know, our focus has been not only on trying to get them up, but also taking care of what is needed in the town of Iowa. You know, we do have water now, we have sewer. Be aware that this is only less than 10 people and we're still operating your water and sewer line and making sure the repairs are in place because we have pumps that are going down from all the damages uh, from the sewer and the water and we're still trying to get them up. Now, I do want to let you know, we, we've moved quite a ways ahead. All the roads are open, so if you do want to come in, you're welcome to come in. We do have a curfew. We ask that you leave. But if you want to come to your house, you can get there anywhere in Iowa at this point. 
Uh, I, I do want to stress, though, that there is heavy traffic. We are staging for Lake Charles, some of the uh, first responders from the fire departments at the mall. We're doing them at the uh, elementary school. And of course, the high school has some of the National Guard units that they're doing some of the uh, uh, fueling. The mall has some fueling for the rest of the parish. So there's a lot of traffic going on in Iowa now. And it's while, while, while it's safe and we do have the police, and I have to thank uh, Tony Mancuso for assisting us in, in improving all of that, uh, you know, it's just there's still dangers. We just had a, a rupture of a uh, natural gas line, which they're fixing, and it's going to be in place. Well, this is still a risky area as uh, because of all the falling debris. Uh, I do... I uh, want to mention that we have finally got in place uh, starting to clear the uh, debris up. We ask that you put it on the side of the road, but make separate piles, vegetative and um, tree, tree and that type of stuff in one pile, construction material, housing material and that type of stuff in another po uh, pile. And we ask that your household garbage not be put in either one. Keep it separately. It'll be It'll still be a week or two before we can get that. However, we hope by the end of the week we'll have a place located to start picking this up and start clearing the streets on that. So, you know, we've done quite a bit for a small town, and I think you'd be impressed with what we've done. We do welcome you to come back and stay. I do want to make mention that you will see power crews working the lines, and, you know, a lot of people think, oh, they, they've put the line up at my house, and it's, it's great all the way up to the transmission. As, uh, as mentioned earlier, that's not the problem. You're probably going to see all our lines fixed and up, but you still won't have electricity until the uh, transmission lines and the substations and all of those are repaired. So uh, once again, I really want to thank the, the small number of employees for what they've done for weathering it out and say yes. And, and I will be putting more communication in uh, on the internet. We expect internet access maybe within a day to two days. We're having to bring in some temporary cell towers and that type of stuff so that we can respond a little bit quicker to questions that are coming on. Going forward, you won't see me very often unless it's something unique. I'm, I'm going to leave it to the OEP and, uh, you know, the, the parish officials. They're taking really good care of the town of Iowa along with all the other problems that they have. So thank you much. Thank you, Mayor Harris. And uh, I do want to reiterate the leadership we have at the mayor level, parish level, elected leadership is great in this parish. You have very capable and caring leaders and we are all in touch regularly met just before this meeting to make sure we're all on the same page because things happen so fast we literally sometimes find things out at 30 minutes before the meeting that some of us didn't know so it means a lot that y'all come in that will wrap up our briefing today unless there are any questions uh, we will have a briefing tomorrow august 31st at uh, monday august 31st at 4 p.m thank you